Okay, so now let's actually solve this. Uh, assume that the velocity is constant in space and time. So we're just going to have a, a, you know, a constant velocity moving everything along here. Uh, and so the PDE becomes uh, the T derivative of U is equal to um, alpha times the X derivative of U minus, sorry, alpha times the double X derivative of U minus C times the X derivative of U. Um, and as we've been doing, you're probably going to want to get your uh, table of Fourier transforms here. Just so you know, you're going you're gonna to have those sorts of things available on the exam because it's an open book exam. Okay, uh, so take the Fourier transforms of both sides. When I do that, on the left-hand side, it's going to be the T derivative of the Fourier transform. On the right side, we're going to have minus alpha C squared times the Fourier transform, and then minus C I C times u hat. So let me, let me just remind you um, that if you have the, the nth derivative, uh, the Fourier transform of this is equal to i to the power of n, c to the power of n times u hat. And so that's where these formulas come from here. I can organize the left-hand side a little bit better. This is going to be minus alpha c squared plus uh, i c c u hat. Now, as far as t is concerned, that right there is just a constant because c is constant in both space and time. And so what this tells us then is u hat, u hat of c t, is equal to u hat of uh, c zero times e to the minus alpha c squared plus i c c t and u hat of c zero is just the the Fourier transform of the initial data. Whoa! So this is going to be equal to f hat. of c. And over here, I want to split this up in the following way. I'm going to write this as e to the minus alpha c squared t e to the minus i c t c. Okay, so why do I want to do it that way? Well, I'm looking at my Fourier transform table. I'm looking at my Fourier transform table uh, and I notice I have some of the following lines here. Well, first of all, this right here looks similar to the Fourier transform of the of the solution to the diffusion equation. So this looks like this looks like u hat, uh, sorry I'm not going to use u hat, but this looks like the Fourier transform of the solution to the diffusion equation. Okay, now what about here? Here, again, looking at my Fourier transform table, uh, if my function, uh, let me not use f, let me use g, let's say. <clears throat> if my function is g of x minus c, so we already looked at this as well, the Fourier transform of this is e to the minus i c c g hat. Okay, and so now my, my c is going to be equal to really um, c times t. Okay, so let's look at this part that I have in orange. So let's look at that. So I've got f hat of c times e to the minus alpha c squared t. I'm going to do my normal thing to try to make this look like the the corresponding entry in the Fourier transform table. So this is e to the minus c squared over four over uh, four alpha t. Okay, so a is one over four alpha t. So uh, I need to have the square root of pi 
over the square root of a. So that right there, we know the inverse Fourier transform of that, but to divide, to multiply by the square root of pi over the square root of a, I need to multiply that. Uh, and just as we've done before, this is going to be 1 over 4 pi alpha t. And just to be explicit here, uh, I'm saying a is equal to 1 over 4 alpha t. Okay, and so now the inverse Fourier transform of this part using the convolution theorem. So actually, let me, let me be just take one more step here. The inverse Fourier transform of this is e to the minus x squared over 4 alpha t. And so the inverse Fourier transform of this whole thing is going to be the integral. Again, I'm using the convolution theorem. But like I said, uh, up here, it looks like this is a solution to the diffusion equation. And if you're confident in that, you can jump straight to the, you know, the solution for the diffusion equation. Uh, anyways, this is going to be equal to f of y phi of x minus y. Whoops. Uh, T dy. Okay, so let's come back up here. So in other words, the inverse Fourier transform of that is equal to this. Okay, but now we're multiplying it by this. Okay, so so the g, so in other words, uh, I have e to the minus ICC g hat. The g hat is equal to that. Okay, if I'm if I'm comparing things, the g hat is equal to that thing that I have there in the orange box. And so what this tells me then is the inverse Fourier transform of that whole thing it's just going to be equal to the inverse Fourier transform of this, but shifted c units to the right. Okay, so this is like my g of c, or sorry, g of x. Again, using using the this formula here, or using you know lining things up there. So then u of x t is going to be equal to g of x minus, okay, and again, um, I have a c here and c here, but they're different c's. The c is just the thing that's multiplying the minus i c. So up here, it's just equal to c t. So it's going to be g of x minus c t. Or if I plug everything into the integral, this is going to be the integral of f of y phi of x minus ct minus y t dy. Okay, but let's back up a little bit. So this, like we said, that's the solution to the diffusion equation. Okay, so let's back up a little bit here. So let u solve the t derivative of u is equal to alpha times the x derivative of u and u of x zero is equal to uh, f of x. Okay, then what we're saying, uh, the solution The solution to the diffusion equation with convection, in other words, the one that we're looking at above, the solution to the, to, to the diffusion equation with convection is u of x minus ct comma t. Okay, we'll say, we'll say v of x zero. Sorry, v of x t is equal to that. Okay, so let me just say this one more time. So if, <clears throat> um, if u solves the t derivative of u is equal to alpha times the double x derivative of u and u of x zero is equal to f of x, then the function v 
of xt equals u of x minus ct. This solves the diffusion equation with convection. In other words, the t derivative of v is equal to alpha times the double x derivative of v minus c times the x derivative of v and v of x zero equals f of x. Okay, and you can you know that that's that's what we've just proven. Okay, let's approach this from a different point of view though. Okay, so let's imagine what's happening here. So in the diffusion equation with convection, there's two things going on. There's the, the diffusion happening. Okay, and we know if we just look at the diffusion, we know we know the solution to that. Um, so let's again, let's just say u is going to be the solution if we're just looking at the diffusion. But then we have this velocity field that's just carrying everything along. So what's happening then is we've got two things kind of going on independently. We have the diffusion that's happening. And then we have the velocity field that's just kind of carrying this whole thing along. Okay, so without convection, so again, let's just imagine we've got water flowing along a pipe here, or it's not flowing. So without convection, the water is not flowing. We put some concentration of, you know, food coloring. And then what's going to happen is that as time goes on, this is going to spread out this way, okay? And so this maybe is at t is equal to zero. And then if we look to see what's going to happen, you know, for t a little bit bigger, uh, so let's say, well, it was going to be sort of very concentrated here. And then for t bigger, it's going to spread out. It's going to spread out like this, but it's not going to be as concentrated. It'll be, you know, more concentrated toward the center and then but not as much there and then it'll sort of spread out like this okay it's not really what i want to um something like this that's like the center uh and then it's a little darker here and a little lighter here, a little darker here, a little lighter here, but it's just spreading out. You, you can imagine what's happening here. And this is gonna be for t bigger than zero. Okay, but now if we consider convection, well, what effect is the convection gonna have? Well, the convection is just going to move this whole thing along here. It's gonna move this whole thing along at a speed of c meters per second or whatever the units are. So if we consider convection, It's just going to be whatever this is, but shifted c times t units to the right. With convection will be the above, but everything uh, everything shifted c t units to the right because everything is just flowing along. We have this diffusion that's happening and we have the velocity that's carrying it along. These two things are happening independently and so as it's moving along, it's you know spreading out and doing, so it's spreading out and doing its diffusion thing, but it's also moving along like this. Okay, and so then again, if u satisfies the t derivative of u is equal to alpha times the x derivative of u, then the solution, our, our prediction, we haven't proven this yet, but our prediction is that the solution to the diffusion equation with convection is going to be V of xt is equal to U of x minus ct, t, that this solves, again, like I said above, the t derivative of U is equal to alpha times the double x derivative of U minus c times the x derivative of u. Okay, uh, and exercise, sh uh, prove this. So, so starting from this formula, 
starting from v uh, and u satisfying that differential equation. If you so, in, in other words, if u satisfies, well, let, let me be more clear about what I'm saying here. If u satisfies If u satisfies that, show v satisfies this. Okay, in other words, don't, like don't use a Fourier transform to find v. Just show that if u satisfies the diffusion equation, then v satisfies the diffusion equation with convection. Okay, but you know, just by plugging it into the differential equation and showing that everything works out. Okay, so it's not a complete waste of time that we did all of this Fourier transform work. One, it was exercise. Uh, but two, consider the fact where maybe C is not constant in space. Or sorry, where C is constant in space, but maybe it's not constant in time. Or maybe even consider the case where C uh, is both, con it both depends on space and time. Okay, if C is constant in space, but variable with time, our procedures will go a lot easier. Taking the Fourier transform will be, you know, easy, uh, the hard part now is going to be solving uh, that ordinary differential equation, or the, or the potential hard part would be solving that ordinary differential equation for u hat. Okay, um, that's it for this video.